Now we're going to turn the clock back to 1880 when they built a set of grain elevators up here in Superior, Wisconsin. They used a lot of old growth large format lumber, but eventually the elevators went out of business and now there's a company salvaging the lumber for the past few years. We're going to be using some of that lumber for timber trusses in the great room. So we have Judy Paris with us here today. Judy, you're one of the owners. Uh, so describe to us, what, what do you guys have going on here anyway? Well, we're taking down the Globe Elevator, which was uh, built in 1887, and at that time it was the biggest grain elevator in the world. Uh, it's got about six million board feet of old growth eastern white pine, and we're trying to reclaim that wood. And from your perspective, what's the main premise for doing this? I mean, is, it, is this just a very inexpensive way of getting lumber as opposed to growing new trees and cutting them? or what? what Actually, this is a very expensive way of getting lumber, but it's the only way to get old growth eastern white pine. This wood is extinct. So from your perspective, what's the difference between an old growth timber and let's say one that's grown today? First of all, that the wood was allowed to grow for hundreds of years. So you've got the really tight growth rings and just uh, a, a beautiful patina that you don't get in new wood. Also the fact the wood, after it was harvested, was allowed to weather for 125 years. All of the, the twisting and shrinking that it was going to do, it's already done. Now the frustrating thing for you guys, if you didn't buy the land here, somebody else probably come in, buy the land, and then they'd tear down the buildings because they're probably not going to start this business because it's kind of a labor level and not an easy thing to do. Yeah, it turns out this is way harder than an anybody anticipated, but it's really important. We've got five million board feet of wood, which if we don't salvage it for reuse is going to be incinerated or plowed into a landfill. First of all, that's the equivalent of about 550 acres of fresh pine that would have to be harvested to replace it. There's also the, the carbon impact, the fact that if this wood is allowed to deteriorate or, God forbid, catch on fire, there's 22,000 metric tons of carbon that are going to be released into the atmosphere. That's the equivalent of 8,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. So what's the process? Well, first you got to get the metal cladding off the outside. Then you got to pull the conduit and the debris um, and the heavy metal parts from the inside. For the timbers, it's literally one stick at a time. One stick at a time. And what, what about the wall sections? We use chainsaws to cut the sections loose on both ends. We have a fork that goes over the top of the section. And then we get out of the way and let the crane lift it up and bring it to the ground. And then once the slab is on the ground, then we can separate the individual planks. So once you get everything taken apart, what, what are the final uses for it? Well, um, you can see a lot of them here. Um, the timbers mostly go to timber framers. Okay. So and you can see how the grain just polished this wood and made it really nice and smooth and gave it a special patina. This is a really lovely use of our wood for uh, cabinet doors. This is some of our oak timbers. We make flooring and uh, paneling out of this. You can see how tight the grain is here. Then this is some white pine with a little bit of a walnut stain on it. Uh, the same thing with a slightly darker stain. And this stuff here is the original surface. Well, you can see the saw marks on it. Exactly. You can see the saw marks from the 1880s milling. And lots of nail holes. Lots of nail holes, and yep. they're square nail holes. These are, these are um, holes that were made by square cut wrought iron nails. Okay. Over what, here. What is this right here? How, how does that happen? This is a piece of bin wall. These are stacked planks that have been eroded down the side by grain so sliding over it. So this is a grain just it. pelting it again over the decades. Or just sliding over it, or you can see this is where the grain wow. really slammed against Nail's it. Nail's still sticking out. Yep. The harder parts of the wood remain behind. The softer parts get eroded by the grain. And then you guys also do flooring. We do. This is a hand sanded product where you can see the original circle saw marks from the 1880s and you can see all the grain of the wood. We try to preserve as much as we can of the original character. Mm -hmm. This is a smooth planed floor. It's the same wood even though it looks very different, but um, this is what happens when we sand away all of the original surface, but of course we're still left with the very tight grain. 
Uh, of course, for your project, we're going to be using some timbers for yep. some decorative trusses, um, similar to what we've got in this picture here. V very close to that, yeah. Yeah, so um, do you want to go out in the yard and we'll go look for some Wh timbers? Why don't we, yeah. So we're looking for what, 24 foot is that? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Lumber from 1880 being put into a house built 125 years later. You can't beat it.